Well, my father's fall was a very intense experience. You know, the most frustrating part was it could have been prevented had we taken the appropriate measures. It started four weeks ago. It was just another typical night at the Garcia household until... Grandkids. Oscar. Oscar. Call 911. Oh, oh, okay, uh, let me call him. Just let me call him. Uh, call him. Let me call him. Uh, call him. Uh, 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 911, what's your emergency? Hello? 911, what's your emergency? Yes, my husband fell. He's on the floor. I need help. Doing? Oh, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I think I'm okay. You fell down? Look at me. Yeah. You fell down? Yeah. Okay. You all right? Uh, How you feeling? I'm okay. What's I'm your okay. name? Uh, Oscar. Okay. Uh, Oscar? Are yeah. you okay? Uh, Did you fall and hit your head? No. I don't think so. Okay. Uh, all right, why don't you just relax. Oh. BP is 110 over 80, heart rate oh. 90, respiration 20. His glucose level is at 80. Is he okay? Oh. He's stable for now. It's a good thing he didn't oh. hit his head. No, I just slipped and fell. That's, that's all. I just. We oh. need to take him to the ER for an evaluation. No, no, uh, I'm okay. I'm okay, I, I'll just go see my doctor. We will. He has an appointment coming up next oh. week. Okay, but make sure you take him. Uh, just, uh, I'll get up, I'll get up. It was such a struggle to get him to go, but we were able to keep the appointment. Yeah, but it was just a waste of time. No, it wasn't, Oscar. Yes, it was. The doctor wants me to do exercise. Exercise at my age? Mm. Then she said, there's something wrong with my balance. There's nothing wrong with me. I just fell. And then she mentions this Chinese thing for balance. Tai Chai or Chi or something. And no way. That's some other kind of people. They weren't exercises. Okay, so what brings you in today, Mr. Garcia? No, 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 no. Oscar, you need to tell her. Tell her. Well, I kind of fell last week. Oscar, you did fall. Okay, tell me about your fall. Well, it's her fault, I, but I mean, I got up, like always go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. I was okay. I went to the bathroom and just hollering. Mr. Garcia's case is actually really common. The fact that he has has fallen in the past and fallen recently. Um, in fact, the single most uh, predictive prognostic factor that a person is going to fall is that they've already fallen. Um, 
So when you're screening for, for elderly patients who will probably fall, uh, you need to ask if they have fallen in the past, um, especially since the last visit, if you see them regularly. And if they're a new patient, you can ask if they've fallen in the last year. In regard to the fall, you want to know whether there was loss of consciousness, did the person have lightheadedness or palpitations, whether the person tripped or stumbled over something, if they were able to get up within five minutes, and if they required assistance to get up. Uh, you also want to ask about other potential contributing factors, like drinking alcohol or conditions that may impair gait, like Parkinson's disease. Yeah. Okay, so can I take a look at the medication that he's taking? Yes. Yes. Are you still on the uh -huh, Of course, that's what you're taking, and I know they look messy. But my daughter wrote in the bottles to let us know what she needs to take each time. Uh -huh. She even got him a pill box. Yeah, but I, I know exactly what I'm supposed to take. I take the little, the, the little blue pill I take for, for urine, for my urine. And, uh, and the purple pill I take for my stomach. Okay. Um, well, your physician is going to want to look at what you're taking anyway, just to make sure that there's no side effects that put you at risk for falling. And what, I'm supposed to stop taking them? I mean, don't I need them? She won't take you off of any of them. Um, it's just good to be aware so that there's no mistakes. You should also note if the person uses any assistive devices, such as a cane, walkers, or wheelchairs. It's important to check for vision problems that may be contributing to falling. To check the visual acuity with a Snellen chart and examine the eyes for cataracts or other physical problems that may be interfering with vision. Uh, you want to see if orthostatic hypotension, which is blood pressure lowering when standing, is a contributing factor. You can check for that by taking their blood pressure in a lying down position and then two minutes later when they are standing. Well, you know, as his primary care provider, when I walked into the room, I could tell Mr. Garcia was a little sensitive about the fact that he had fallen. Uh, and as with most patients, it can be a little bit embarrassing, um, but it's a very serious matter nonetheless. Well, in my initial assessment, I discovered that Mr. Garcia had fallen three or four times in the past year. Uh, the falls had happened under similar circumstances, uh, getting out of bed at night, uh, in poor light, bumping into furniture, pets, and other clutter. Uh, however, he was usually able to get himself up until this last one. Eh, no big deal, Doc. I'm an old man. I think it'd be weird if I didn't fall every now and then. Hmm. Well, have you noticed that the, this happens any particular time of day? Uh, for example, after mm. you take your medications? Uh. It's funny you mention that. Mm -hmm. Every time he takes his orange pill, he gets the woozy. The orange pill? Yes. Can you show me? Mm. This one. Mm. Well, this is hydrochlorothiazide or thiazide. It's a diuretic or water pill. Mm -hmm. And this medication, while it is useful to treat blood pressure, can cause you your blood pressure to drop too much when you stand up. Oh. And that can increase your fall risk. Well, sometimes patients may not be aware, but certain medications can lead to falls. Uh, some cause dehydration, increased sedation, or can lead to hypoglycemia or low blood sugar. In Mr. Garcia's case, medications like hydrochlorothiazide, glipizide, lorazepam, and spironolactone, and terazosin could all have been contributing to his falls. Well, for Mr. Garcia, we performed the time to get up and go test, which is an important office-based measure of mobility. Um, it's a quick, uh, easy test you can perform in the office to assess a person's ability to stand, walk, turn, stop, come back and sit down. And Usually individuals should be able to do that in uh, 7 to 10 seconds. So if a patient can complete that test in 10 seconds or less, we consider them to have high mobility. Uh, folks who take a bit longer, uh, 10 to 20 seconds are considered at risk. And you know, folks that take upwards of 20, 30 seconds to complete the test, that's considered somebody who's almost a non-functional ambulator. Mr. Garcia, uh -huh. I'd like to do a quick test to check your mobility and your balance. Okay. When I say go, I'd like you to stand up without using the armrests if you can. 
Oh, I don't know if I got the strength for that, but... Well, if you need to, okay. go ahead and use the armrest. I'd like okay. you to stand up, walk 10 feet or to the black tape, turn around, come back, and sit down. Okay. Okay? We'll start whenever you're ready. Okay. I'm up, I'm up, I'm up. Okay. Twenty-eight seconds. Oh, okay, mm. was that a good good well, time? That suggests there might breaking. <laughs> that suggests there might be a mobility issue here. Oh, okay. Mm. Well. Yeah. Well, after the initial assessment with Mr. Garcia, often we're able to make several recommendations. Uh, I often show patients how to appropriately use a cane or a walker or other assistive devices. I also discuss the importance of neck alert bracelets. Uh, this is a bracelet that can be worn around the neck, and if a patient falls and is unable to get up, uh, they can call for assistance. Uh, as in the case of Mr. Garcia, I also often refer patients to physical therapy so that they can learn gait and balance exercises, and I might refer them to an occupational therapist who can perform a home safety evaluation. Well, Mr. Garcia, I'm so glad you came in today so we could talk about your falls and ways that we can reduce the chance you'll have another fall in the future. I have several recommendations I'd like to make. First, I'd like, you to, like to refer you to a physical therapist who can work with you on your gait and do some balance and strength training. I'd also uh, like to provide you with a safety checklist so that you can look around the home and identify any hazards or uh, things that might be increasing your fall risk at home. Um, I think we also need to talk a little bit about your footwear. It's better if you can wear uh, footwear that's going to support the whole foot. Those flip-flops you've got on today are increasing your fall risk. I'd also like you to think about looking in the community to see if there are any uh, Tai Chi classes that you might enroll in to improve your balance and your strength. Right, okay? sure. mm -hmm. I'm also going to recommend that you see the eye doctor to update your eye exam and evaluate your cataracts. Okay? Okay. And uh, I'd like you to start taking calcium and vitamin D supplements to strengthen your bones. Right? And as I mentioned, we're probably going to need to stop your hydrochlorothiazide, the water pill you've been taking. It's very useful to treat blood pressure, but sometimes it can cause your blood pressure to drop too much when you stand up. This can increase your fall risk. Uh, here, I thought it was all them rugs you yeah. put all over the place. I trip on them. <laughs> Balance problems in the elderly come from multifactorial problems, but mostly they come from having weakness in their lower extremities, particularly in their hip girdle, their core strength. For example, their gluteus maximus, gluteus medius, their hamstrings, their quadriceps, their tibialis anterior muscles. Um, it also comes from joint mobility issues such as, you know, joint pathology or joint replacements. Um, also, a lot of the elderly fall because of a decline in their sensory systems. Um, just as we age normally, there's changes in the sensory systems. You lose vision, there's decrease in your vestibular system, you have decrease in your somatosensory, so you have decreased sensation from your joints or you have decreased kinesthetic awareness of where you are in space. Um, all of those sensory deficits contribute to problems where they can't necessarily compensate for changes in their environment or any kind of integration of their sensory systems to avoid a loss of balance. One thing my father loves more than being stubborn is his plants. It's almost impossible to keep him away from them. Maria! Maria! Oh, man, what are you doing outside? The doctor told you you shouldn't be doing any physical activity. The doctor wouldn't think watering plants is physically demanding? I've been doing this all my life. Hey, do, we, do you know if we got any more weed killer? I don't know, but if you're gonna be out here, don't drown my flowers. Always oh, got something to nag about.
María. 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 It must have been a week after that visit that I received a phone call. It was one of the scariest days of my life. When I got to the hospital, my father was still in the ER. I could see my mother was distressed as my father just lay on the stretcher. Hi, Mom. Hi, Miha. Hi. You made it in. Yeah. Hi, Dad. Hi, Miha. How are you feeling? Hi. I'm, I'm all right. I just, I'm tired of waiting for the doctor. Hi. Sorry for the wait, folks. Oh. How are you feeling, Mr. Garcia? Oh, you tell me, Doc. Oh, I'm sorry to have I... to tell you. You have broken I... your right hip. Oh. And more specifically, you've broken I... the femoral neck. Oh. I'm sorry, sir? Oh, I didn't know it had a neck. It has a neck. It's oh. just one end of the bone. Oh. But what that means is that you're going to have to go to the operating room to oh. have a surgery to repair this. Oh, what? No, no duct tape? <laughs> oh. I'm afraid that duct tape won't do it this time. Oh. Is he going to be in the hospital oh. for a long time? Oh. Well, we'll admit him tonight, and he'll have the surgery tomorrow. The surgery itself takes a couple of hours. And I would think that he'll need a couple of days in the hospital after that. Um, he may need to go to rehab for a little while after he gets out of the hospital. Oh, I guess that's not too bad. I don't think it's too bad. And we have a really good team here to take care of you. My father's surgery was successful, but the next two weeks of physical therapy really tested him. But Mr. Garcia was tough. Uh, his personality made it a little hard for him to fully participate in his rehabilitation. But for a man of his age and with his injury, he toughed it through. Okay, you're gonna make me well. Yes, sir, I am. All you right, so hurt me? no, not anymore than I have to. Okay. <laughs> okay. So uh, the acute phase of rehabilitation is is real important. Um, we have a very short period of time to really figure out you know, what the patient's needs are gonna be, and we have some very specific goals that we try to get through. Um, when we look, you know, in the first part of the rehabilitation, we're trying to prevent wound complications, make sure that they're healing correctly. We also try to instruct them in their weight-bearing precautions because that's also something that helps them to heal, prevent any complications. Um, we also look at teaching the patient transfer skills and self-management skills that they're going to need you know, as they continue to progress through their rehabilitation. Um, we also look to improve their ambulation, uh, typically with an assistive device, uh, a rolling walker or a standard walker. Um, we also look to prevent hip flexure contractures because that's something that could limit their progress. Um, we try to instruct their family in ways that they can help and things that they should avoid, you know, as they move through their rehabilitation with their goal of heading home. Um, we also try to increase their lower extremity strength uh, in the knee and the ankle muscles. We look at, you know, increasing their passive range of motion, particularly or active assistive range of motion if possible in the affected limb. Uh, we also look at strengthening their upper extremities because they're going to need that kind of strength in order to use a walker. Uh, Mr. Garcia is definitely not used to supporting his whole body weight you know, through his upper extremity. Okay, next let's discuss Mr. Garcia's discharge planning. As you all remember, Mr. Garcia is a gentleman that had the hip fracture that has now been repaired. And I think that the physical therapy has helped him significantly, but he is not functional enough to be discharged home safely. Uh, I agree. Uh, we've been working on mobility exercises, strengthening, we've been teaching him how to use this walker, but, you know, he still needs a lot of assistance with his activities, and he's not safe. At the same time, I don't think he's strong enough to go through the three hours a day of physical and occupational therapy that he'd need to go through at an inpatient rehab facility. So are we suggesting a skilled nursing facility or subacute? What is that? A skilled nursing facility, or a SNF, is an inpatient institution which provides medical, nursing, and rehab skilled care. This is where the patients go to recover. And these skilled personnel are required to meet the needs of the patient, 
promote recovery, and ensure medical safety. So someone like Mr. Garcia might get six days a week of about an hour of physical therapy and occupational therapy uh, for about four weeks, and then he could be discharged home to do outpatient physical therapy? Okay, let's have the Garcia's talk to our social worker and uh, look at some skilled nursing facility. All right, next we have Mrs. Jones. Mrs. At Jones. this point, my father was terrified of falling again. Once my father was discharged, we all knew certain adjustments would have to be made to help him in his physical and mental recovery. We were also referred to home health and safety personnel who came to inspect my parents' house. I finished my evaluation. Come with me so I can walk you through what I found. So, first things first, you need to be aware of water on the floor. Secondly, place a non-slip decal or mat in the tub to avoid slippage. I'd also recommend a nightlight. What I see here is a tight space between the bed and other furniture. And th there are items on the floor, including clothing. And things like this cord to the lamp are easy tripping mechanisms. And we need to ensure that all of the throw rugs, they're fastened down with double-sided tape. We might want to consider placing a urinal by the bedside. I was about to mention this. This pet food is too close to the path that one takes to enter. A falling hazard. Exactly. We just need to move it someplace. The same is true for these rugs as in the bedroom. So I need to buy a lot of double stick tape then and make plans to modify the rest of the house for safety. It's always a transition to make a home a safe environment, but in the long run, you're providing your parents with the opportunity to stay in their home. Thank you. So it's been small changes here and there, but so far it's pretty good. It looks good there, just put it down. It looks good right there. My dad is still active when he wants to be and finds a way to make the most of his days. But he can't get too far without his personal bodyguard. Although my father's fall was a scary experience, I'm grateful to the team of healthcare providers that were there to look after him and bring him to a speedy recovery.